Welcome to our Electrical Principles and Practice NCV NQF Level 2 lesson for today. My name is Mr. Sanjeevi. Today I'm going to be teaching you about continuity and current flow. And the second important aspect that we're going to be looking at is cells in series and in parallel. Let's quickly look at our objectives. Our subject outcomes is explain continuity and current flow. The second important part is to explain and perform calculations on the grouping of electrical cells. Our learning outcomes is that you, the student, should be able to identify closed and open circuits and predict if current flow is possible. You should also explain concepts such as electrical cells, EMF of cells, internal resistance, grouping of cells, and you, the student, should perform calculations and circuits involving the grouping of cells. The previous knowledge that you should have in place before you can engage with this lesson is calculations using Ohm's law. Let's look at our first aspect for this lesson, closed and open circuits. What is a closed circuit? A closed circuit is a complete electric circuit in which current flows. You can see on the picture on your right, it indicates a closed circuit. In this closed circuit, electricity will flow because the electrons will start from its point of origin, go to the component that it needs to energize, and still continue and end up back at its source. When this occurs, this component that we have used in this circuit is a bulb you will notice that the bulb lights up. Now that is a closed circuit. Remember, electrons must start from its point of origin, travel to the component that's connected, and return to its source. That is a closed circuit. The second important thing we come across is a short circuit. A short circuit is a type of closed circuit in a larger circuit where there is a part of very low or zero resistance compared with the normal circuit resistance. Now that sounds a lot. In fact, it sounds a bit confusing. Let me just explain what they are saying here whenever they are speaking about short circuits. Very simply put, a short circuit is a path that electricity takes which is actually a short cut. In this drawing that you see on your right hand side, you will notice that the electrons was intended to travel down this path as indicated. But it didn't do that. It took a shortcut and it's come back to its source. When this occurs, you will find that the component that's connected to it that's meant to be energized doesn't get energized. That component, as in the case of this drawing, which is a light bulb, has not come on. Generally, whenever we have a short circuit as well, it's a very dangerous situation that occurs. And in many instances, it can lead to an explosion or your components or electrical uh, apparatus can get damaged. So we want to try and prevent short circuits as far as possible. Remember this, short circuits are very dangerous. Then the third aspect that we are looking at here is an open circuit. In an open circuit, no current will flow as there is no continuity in the circuit. Let's look at this drawing, the last one on our right hand side. In it you will see an open circuit. So it's clearly indicated by a break in the circuit. That's what an open circuit is, a break in the circuit as indicated here. When there is a break in the circuit, then our component which is connected in that circuit will not be energized because no electricity reaches that component. In the drawing, you will see the com uh, component we are using is a light bulb. The light bulb will not come on. The light bulb will not come on. Why? Because electrons cannot flow through the component and return to its source. Therefore, we have an open circuit. Students, you must know all these different aspects. They are very important for your exams. We will look at them a little bit more in detail in the slides that follows. Okay, here we have continuity and current flow, and we're looking specifically at a series circuit 
and a parallel circuit. In a series circuit, if light bulb A is burnt, then light bulb B will not come on. And if light bulb B is burnt, light bulb A will not come on. If light bulb A or B is burnt, it creates an open circuit. In a parallel circuit, if light bulb A is burnt, then light bulb B will still remain on. And if light bulb B is burnt, light bulb A will still continue to come on. Here we have a series circuit. And what we want to do is see what happens if one of the light bulbs burns out. If light bulb A burns out, have you noticed light bulb B goes off? And if light bulb B burns out, light bulb A also goes off. The reason for that is because we have an open circuit. And as long as you have an open circuit, electrons cannot return to its source. And if electrons cannot return to its source, as indicated in both these diagrams, then we have an open circuit which will result in neither of the light bulbs coming on. Let's look at a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, if light bulb A burns out, we notice that light bulb B still remains on. Why? Because electrons can still travel down this path. When it comes to this junction in the branch, if it goes up and comes to A, it cannot continue because there's a break in the circuit. However, it can come down to B. And when it comes down to B, it still has a pathway to travel and come back to its source. Therefore, light bulb B will stay on. And if light bulb B burns out, we will notice that light bulb A st stays on. Why? Because electricity has a path to travel and it goes through this bulb and it still has an opportunity to return to its source. Therefore, we have a closed circuit. If the lights in your house was connected in series, then if your bathroom light burnt out, all the other lights would not work. Since the lights in your house are connected in parallel, if the light in your kitchen burns out, all the other lights will continue working. Let's look at a typical exam question and we're looking at March 2017. We're going to re refer to the drawing above and answer the following questions. Question 2.1 asks, if switch A is closed, will current flow through the circuit? Let's go and close switch A. Have you noticed what happens? all the light bulbs have come on. That means when I close switch A, I've created a closed loop. And that closed loop means I have a closed circuit. Whenever I have a closed circuit, current will flow, travel through whatever components are connected and return to its source. So in this case, when I close switch A, all the bulbs came on. The reason for the answer is that I have now actually created a closed circuit, therefore all the light bulbs will work. Question 2.2 says, explain what will happen if light bulb A is short circuited. Light bulb A is short circuited. Now remember, what did I say about a short circuit? A short circuit is when the current takes a short cut. Let's go and look at that shortcut that that current will take. Here's the shortcut. In other words, electricity travels here, and now that electricity is going to travel along this red dotted line and come to this junction in that circuit. If it does that, if it does that, what's the consequence for all the bulbs in the circuit? Let's go and see what happens when it takes that shortcut. Light bulb A will not work anymore. Why? because electricity will travel down the path of least resistance. Let me say that one more time. Electricity always travels down the path of least resistance. So we have this shortcut here. Electricity is not going to go through that light bulb because there's a resistance there. And it will come back to this junction 
and yet it will cause light bulb C and light bulb D to work. However, there is one more thing that it has done. It has also caused light bulb B not to come on. Why? Because if it travels down this part of the branch through light bulb B, there is a resistance, a greater resistance on that branch of the circuit. Electricity will not choose to travel there. It will always choose to travel down the path of least resistance. So your answer for question 2.2, what will happen if light bulb B is short circuited? Light bulb A and light bulb B will not work. However, light bulb C and light bulb D will still come on because the electrons will reach this junction and then still split between both those branches. Question 2.3. Explain what will happen if bulb D is blown. Okay, so we want to know what will happen if this bulb is blown. So here we have all our light bulbs. They are all working. We have a closed circuit. Now I want to watch what will take place if this bulb, light bulb D, is blown. If bulb D is blown, we have an open circuit on that branch. And because we have an open circuit on that branch, electrons will not flow through there. But it still can flow through the top branch, therefore light bulb C will work. And it still is coming through via light bulb A and B. However, nothing will happen at light bulb D. So the answer to that question is light bulb D will not work but light bulb A, light bulb B, and light bulb C will still come on because they are still working within parallel branches. Next, we're going to come across another important aspect that we are looking at for our lesson for today, and that is the grouping of cells. But before we commence with grouping of cells, there is a very important aspect that we must address, and that is internal resistance. What is internal resistance? It is a resistance of a cell or battery due to the chemical activity inside that cell or battery and is indicated by the small letter R. Small letter R. Okay? Please, students, don't forget. Why do we have internal resistance in a battery or in a cell? We have internal resistance because of the chemicals that are used in that battery or that cell. The drawing on your left indicates how we connect up batteries or cells in series. However, that's not the correct drawing. That's not a circuit diagram or an electrical schematic. The one on your right is the correct drawing. There is one more thing that students generally make a mistake with whenever it comes to these two aspects. Students think that this rectangle, the small rectangle here, indicates the battery or the cell. No, that's wrong. This small rectangle here indicates the internal resistance. The symbol, the correct symbol for each of these cells is E1, E2, E3, and E4. Make sure you know what you are drawing and make sure you understand what you have drawn. So this is the correct way of drawing it. But we must take consideration of two very important things whenever we are working with cells or batteries in series. The total internal resistance for cells or batteries in series, to work that out, all we need to do is just add. We're going to add the value of R1, R2, R3, R4 to give us total internal resistance, which is RT. So, it's very easy to work out total internal resistance. All we need to do is add. Add the different values and we will end up with the total internal resistance value. To work out the total EMF, it's exactly the same thing. The total EMF, all you need to do is just add them. Add E1, E2, E3 and E4 to get the total EMF. Sometimes you might only be given just two cells and if they ask you what's the total EMF, just add E1 and E2. All you need to do to work out total EMF is add. All you need to do to work out total internal resistance is add. That is for grouping of cells in series. Let's look at a typical exam question that you would probably encounter. 
four cells each with an EMF of 1.5 volts and an internal resistance of 0 0.2 ohms are connected in series and then across a 20 ohm resistor. Sketch the circuit and calculate A, the total EMF of the battery, B, the total internal resistance of the battery, C, the total uh, current flowing through the circuit, D, the volt drop across the battery, and F, the potential difference across the 20 ohm resistor. The first part of this question says, sketch the circuit. So we need to draw that circuit diagram. What will that circuit diagram look like? This is what it looks like. Now students, some, some students draw some funny, weird looking drawings. I don't want you to do that. This is the drawing. You must draw it exactly like how I've drawn it. This drawing is not complete. We still need to put in the values. Let's put in our values into this drawing as well. So we've got four cells. There's the EMF values in it, 1.5 volts. Now let's go and put in our internal resistance values. And there's it there, 0 0.2 ohms each. But we also have an external resistor. And that external resistor is 20 ohms. Let's put it there into our drawing as well. Now that our drawing has been drawn with all the values put into it, let's go and work out our different calculations. The first part of the question says calculate the total EMF. I told you to work out total EMF for cells in series. All you need to do is add. And here we're adding E1, E2, E3, E4 to get total EMF, which is 6 volts. To work out the total internal resistance, you just add. We're adding R1, R2, R3, and R4, which gives us total internal resistance of 0 0.8 ohms. The third aspect we are looking at is calculate the total resistance. The total resistance is going to be the value of all the internal resistances plus the value of the external resistor. So now we have the total internal resistance, which we worked out as 0 0.8 ohms. And we know the value of the external resistor. It's 20. Add the two up to get the total internal, uh, the total resistance of the circuit. To calculate the total current, we're going to use this formula. The EMF total divided by the resistance total, which is 6 divided by 20.8 and giving us a value of 0 0.288 amperes. The last two questions are calculate the volt drop across the battery. But before you calculate the volt drop, you must understand what they are asking you when they're saying calculate the volt drop. What we are looking for here is the value of the voltage that will be lost coming out of that battery. There is a value that's going to be lost because each of the cells has an internal resistance. To calculate the value of the voltage that's lost because of that internal resistance, we will use this formula, IT times total internal resistance, 0 0.288 times 0 0.8, and this is equal to 0 0.23 volts. That is the value of the volt drop. Then we want to work out the voltage that travels throughout that circuit. To do that, we can say V is equal to IT times the external resistor, which is 0 0.288 times 20, giving us a value of 5.76 volts. How do I know that that answer is correct? 5.76 plus 0 0.23 should give me 6, which is the total EMF of that battery. Let's go and look at cells in parallel. When we're dealing with cells in parallel, Students, please take note. This is how they are connected. We connect cells in parallel like this. I've also put in cells in series on your left-hand side so that you can see the difference between the two. Remember, this is not a proper schematic diagram or a circuit diagram for them, but this is just a visualization so that you can see the difference clearly. What does it really look like when you are drawing this diagram properly? The one on your right-hand side is the proper diagram. However, there's a few things that you must take note of whenever we are dealing with b batteries or cells in parallel. To calculate the total internal resistance, to calculate the total internal resistance, 
all we need to do is take the internal resistance of one one of these resistors internal resistance values and divide them by the number of cells for example if I told you cell 1 as an EMF of 1.5 volts and an internal resistance of 0, 0,2 then I'll take the value 0, 0,2 and divide it by the number of cells in that circuit in this case I'll say 0, 0,2 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4 that's how you work out the total internal resistance the other important thing to remember is how do you work out total EMF total EMF is very simple for cells in parallel we take the total EMF as the EMF of one cell if I told you E1 is 1.5 E2 is 1.5 E3 is 1.5 so on then if I asked you what's the total EMF you will just take the value of one of them and you will tell me the total EMF is 1.5 because I'm going to take the value of one cell let's go and look at a typical exam question four cells each with an EMF of 1,4 volts and an internal resistance of 0,3 ohms are connected in parallel they are connected across a 7 ohm resistor draw the circuit and calculate A the total internal resistance B the total EMF C the current through the external resistor D the current supplied by each cell and E the potential difference across the 7 ohm resistor the first part of the question says draw the circuit diagram this is what my circuit diagram will look like however it's not complete because there's no values in it let's go put the values in quickly one point E1 is 1,4 and so to E2, E3 and E4 let's go put in the values of our internal resistance each, each cell has an internal resistance of 0, 0,3 ohms as indicated in the drawing yet we also have an external resistor and that external resistor is 7 ohms now that's a complete drawing and whenever you are asked to draw it make sure your drawing looks just like this let's go and answer the question the first part of the question says calculate the total in internal resistance remember what I told you we're going to take the value of one internal resistance and in this case it was 0, 0,3 and divide it by the number of cells I know I've got four cells there's the value of one internal resistor if I divide it by four my total internal resistance is going to be 0, 0,075 ohms B calculate the total EMF the total EMF is the EMF of one cell what is the value of that one cell 1,4 volts okay there's it here 1,4 volts C says calculate the current through the external resistor to calculate the current through the external resistor the first thing I must do is go and work out total resistance which is capital R T to work out total resistance of the entire circuit I must add the total internal resistance plus the value of the external resistor and that's going to be 0, 0,075 plus 7 giving me 7,075 ohms that's the value of the total resistance of that entire circuit then I can go and work out my IT which is the question here it says calculate the current IT is equal to EMF total divided by RT which is 1,4 divided by 7,075 giving me a value of 0, 0,197 amperes now that I've worked it out the last part of the question says calculate the current supplied by each cell to work out the current supplied by each cell all I need to do is take the total current and divide it by the number of cells my total current is 0, 0,197 the number of cells is 4 and this is, gives me an answer of 0, 0,049 amperes going through each cell now students we come to something a little bit more complicated how do we connect up cells in a combination of series and
parallel. In the figure below, a battery of eight cells is connected in series and parallel. Each cell has an EMF of 1.5 volts and an internal res resistance of 0 0.2 ohms. So what, it, what are they saying? We have four cells on the top and we've got four cells at the bottom. Each cell has an internal resistance and there's the internal resistance indicated by small r1, small r2, r3, r4, r5, r6, r7, r8. All of those are indications of the values of the internal resistance and each one of them is 0, 0,2 ohms. The question says calculate the total EMF and the second question says calculate the total internal resistance. To do this students, the first thing I need to do is I need to simplify this drawing. The drawing as it is, is very complicated. Point one, step one, simplify the drawing. Let's go and see what we are talking about. We want to look at line CD and we want to look at line EF. In line CD, I have E1, E2, E3, and E4. That's the line on the top. You can clearly see it here. There's it on the top. I have E1, E2, E3, E4 on the top. So what I want to do is I'm going to go and add to work out my total EMF of all those cells on that first line. The total on the top is going to give me 6 volts. I can also go on the top and add all the values of my resistors, which is 0, 0,2, 0, 0,2, and it'll give me a total value of 0, 0,8 ohms. In the second line that you will see, line EF, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to simplify this line. And if I simplify that line, line EF, I'm going to add all my voltages up, or I'm going to add up all the values of my EMF, which is 1,5, four times which gives me six volts and I'm also adding all the internal resistances as well. So here's my drawing. If I simplify that drawing, this is what I'm left with. All that added up with the internal resistance gives me six volts and 0 0,8 ohms. On the bottom line, same thing, six volts, 0 0,8 ohms. Now that I have a modified or simplified parallel circuit, I can go and work out the values that's asked for in the question. The question says calculate the total EMF. That total EMF, remember, in a parallel circuit, the total EMF is the EMF of one cell. There's the answer, 6 volts. And to work out the total internal resistance, I need to take one internal resistance value and divide it by the number of cells. Here's one internal resistance value and I will divide it by two cells, which gives me 0, 0,8 divided by 2, and the answer for that is 0, 0,4 ohms. I have answered the question with regards to combinations of series and parallel uh, cells. In conclusion, in this lesson, we have studied continuity and current flow. We have explained and performed calculations in the grouping of electrical cells. You, the student, should be able to identify closed and open circuits and predict if current flow is possible. You should explain concepts such as electrical cells, EMF of cells, internal resistance, grouping of cells, and perform calculations on circuits involving the grouping of cells. Please take care, students. Make sure you practice social distancing, use a mask, and ensure that you're safety at all times. Thank you.